So here we are, we're going to talk about the cosine rule now. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, sort of like Pythagoras, minus 2AB cos C. Uh, now, we use the cosine rule when the sine rule just won't work. Uh, two instances, the, the two instances we use it, we know three sides, 4, 5, 7, and we want to find one of the angles. Now, you could try using your sine rule, pause the video, try it out, uh, but this is side A, and this is side B, and this is side C, so you don't know two of one letter, so you just can't use the sine rule here. The other instance is when you know two sides, two sides, and the included angle. That means the angle between the two sides, where the two sides meet. Now again, you can try putting them into sine rule, pause the video, try it out, but this is side A, this is side B, and that's angle C. You don't know two of one letter, so you're not going to be able to find one side of the sine rule. All right. So uh, that's the cosine rule. There's the formula. Here's two good questions. Why don't we just do those two questions? All right, so here's our question. Um, now, what am I trying to find? Well, I can find the angles, but I can't do that directly. So I'd have to find one of the sides first, and then I could find the angles if I wanted to. So let's just find one of the sides. Let's find that top side that we don't know. Um, now, let's label up our triangle. Now, this is the formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. It's designed to find an unknown c value. Now, you can swap the a and the c, but that means you'd have to swap them there and there. You can swap the v. You can write that formula however you want, as long as it's kind of in that pattern. Uh, but it's probably just easier if we make our unknown c. Okay, so this is side c, which makes this angle c. Now, it doesn't, I don't care whether they're A or B, but I'll call this angle B, which makes this side B. I'll call this angle A, which makes this side A. And now it's simply a matter of putting all of that into our formula. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine capital C. So, let's do it. A is 4. 4. I like to put it in brackets just so I don't stuff up. B is 5 minus 2 times whatever a is, 4, times whatever b is, 5, times cosine of c, in this case, 32. Now, remember that is c squared. Type all of that into my calculator, I will get an answer. Now, I've written it 7.08, and I looked at the thing, and I went, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't look right to me. I thought it'd be a smaller angle than that. And that's because it is because I'm not looking for c squared, I'm looking for c. So my last step is to square root 7.08. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. They stop here. Don't stop here. You've got some square root stuff to do. So my answer is 2.66. That's the ball game. That is 2.66. Uh, 2.66. Now, now that I know that, if I want to find that angle, or if I want to find that angle, I can just use my sine rule now. Because I know a side and I know an angle opposite each other, so now I can just use sine rules everywhere. Um, okay, that is the one type of cosine rule. It's probably the easier one, because it's literally just shove all the numbers in, put it into your calculator, answer. Here's the one where you have to sort of twist things around a little bit. So here's my triangle, and I want to find theta. So I want to find, like, this guy here, this unknown angle. So I'll just label up my triangle with that as C. That's just going to make my life easier. And I'll just label everything else at random A, A, B, B, C, C. Okay, um, now, two ways you can know about this. You can sub in the values and then start rearranging it, or you can rearrange that formula first. I'm going to sub in the values. Um, I just feel a little more comfortable when there's numbers there. All right, so I have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine capital C. Okay, and now c is 5, so 5 squared equals a squared, which is 7 squared, plus b squared, which is 4 squared, minus 2 times a, which is 7 times b, which is 4, cosine the angle I don't know. So now, now that I've got all of these numbers in here, I need to rearrange it for theta. 
Um, I might just simplify things down a little bit before I do that. So 5 squared is obviously 25. I've got 49 here plus 16. Um, minus uh, 7 times 4 is 28, times 2 is um, 56. Okay, uh, 25. Um, 49 plus 16, that must be like 65 minus 56 cos theta. So now it says 25 equals 65 minus 56 cos theta. Um, I can I might move negative 56 cos theta to this side to make it positive. So that'd be 56 cos theta. And I'll move that 25 over to here. So now that's 65 minus 25. All right, so now I have uh, 40 equals 56 cos theta. Uh, now we have cos theta equals 40 over 56 and theta equals inverse cos 40 over 56. Calculator and we'll get an answer. And my answer is uh, 44.42 degrees and that angle there is 44.42 degrees. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, that angle is obviously going to be larger than that angle. That angle is going to be smaller because the sizes of the angles correspond with the sizes of the sides. 44.42. Uh, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. There is another way to do that, which I'll show you real quick. So I'll just rearrange the whole thing uh, before putting anything in. So I'm going to move negative 2ab cos c to the left-hand side to where the c squared is. So 2ab cos c, that turns it into a positive. Uh, and I'll move this c squared over to here, and that'll make it a negative. So a squared plus b squared minus c squared. Okay, now I'll divide everything by 2ab. So cos c equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. And now... I'll say that c is equal to shift cos negative 1, uh, a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. Now I have the cosine rule in a different form, a form that tells you the angle or has the angle as the subject, uh, and we've got all of this stuff. And now we can just sub in um, 7, 4, 5, 7, and 4, uh, and put it into one single formula. Don't do any of this rearranging, you've got an answer. Now, important to note, this formula appears on your formula sheet, so you don't really have to memorize it. This formula, you are free to memorize it and use it if you're being asked to find an unknown angle, but that formula does not appear on your formula sheet. So if you want to avoid having to rearrange things, if you want to avoid having to rearrange things and you just want to memorize a formula, go nuts, you can do that, but just be aware that you have to memorize it if you want to use it and be able to just plug values straight into it. Okay, uh, that's the cosine rule. It's That's when you use it. We've gone through two examples, finding a side, finding an angle, uh, and two different ways, I guess, of finding an angle. That's the cosine rule.